Hello you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Katori Dusty you back with another YouTube video. Ah! Welcome to podcast episode. Hold on, let me. Episode six. Whew. It's been two months since I've uploaded a podcast video. Let me get my notes. Ooh, today oh, we're going to be talking about finding strength in the struggle. And as always, I have to give you guys a little quick background story. I get called princess like all the time and people think that I don't work and everything. Like my life is just so perfect and it's not that my life is perfect. I think I just make what I go through look easier than others. It's not that I don't go through anything and it's not that I don't care because there's been instances where it's been like it's been an emergency or something that should be urgent, something that I should be panicking and worrying about, crying about, stressing about, depressed about and I'm not. So people are questioning, "Oh, do you not care?" And it's not that I don't care. I just I've already given the situation to God. And once I've given the situation to God, there's no point of me worried about it. There's no point of me stressing about it, crying about it, because he is my strength in the struggle. I was talking to a new friend of mine, and she was like, oh, you're so princess, and, you know, I want your life. I would much rather be your life. Like, you, you don't have any worries in the world. And I'm like, girl... If only you knew. <laughs> like, if you knew my story, I promise you wouldn't want to take a single foot in my shoes. Everybody suffers somewhere. Everybody. No matter how perfect you think their life is, everybody suffers somewhere. That's the first thing that I need y'all to. People may not suffer in the way you do, but they still are suffering somewhere. The enemy is attacking them somewhere. So I was telling her, like, girl, the enemy <laughs> attacks me as well. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, I started to think like, oh my gosh, maybe this is where I share my testimony. But my testimony is just so like, there's just so much that god has got me through there's so much that god has brought me from there's i don't know god has just been too good to me so it's like where do i start do i start from the beginning all i could say was no girl like the enemy attacked me i go through things as well and she's like oh no you just seem like you don't have to worry about anything except for your next meal appointment i wish that was my only worry in life. <laughs> there has been what many would deem an emergency, something that's tragic, or just something that should shake me and should cause me to fall into depression, anxiety, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And because I don't, ninety-nine percent of the time. I get asked like, oh, do you not care? Like, this is an emergency. Like, oh, why aren't you acting like this is urgent? And it's not that I don't care. It's not that I'm not urgent. I've just already given it to God. I've done everything that I can do. I'm tired of being tired. So I'm taking this situation to God and I'm giving God the situation. Okay? I'm taking the situation to God and I'm bringing God to the situation. Okay, because Jesus is my strong power. And it's not even that I'm nonchalant, because I'm not a nonchalant person. I'm a very emotional person. And I'm going to cry. I I cry openly, publicly. I'll cry on the internet. I call, I'll cry in front of friends, in front of strangers. I don't care. I'll cry. If something has made me upset, made me sad, or made me angry, I'm going to cry. But I cry and I express my emotions that society deemed weak freely because I know I serve a God. I serve the biggest God, the one and only God. Hello. And regardless of what I'm crying about, I know that 
at the end of the day, he's still working for my good. In that everything is going to work out in my favor. So regardless of what's going on, I know that, uh, yes, I may cry. I may cry. I may cry. But I promise it'll only be for a night. Weeping may endure, but for one night. One night. One night. But joy cometh in the morning. I know that it may not be tomorrow morning. But I know that even as I sleep and slumber that my God is working things out. Whether I see the results tomorrow morning, the next morning, two weeks from now, three months from now, five years from now, I know that my God is working, is going, is going to work it out. He got it. You have to know when and how to refocus your life. I've learned that one, not all of your suffering comes from your sin. Sometimes we get ourselves in a sticky situation and then we have to call on God. We tend to get ourselves in situations that only God can bring us out of. But there are also some things that we have to go through so that we can grow through them. Once you refocus your perspective, because that's what suffering is a perspective, right? You're only suffering if you think that you're suffering. You can only suffer what you allow yourself to. And what I mean by that is, is that it's all about perspective. Okay, you being fired from your job. Some people may look at that as suffering, the end all be all. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my rent, how I'm gonna pay all my bills, I have kids, how am I gonna take care of them, how am I gonna provide for my family? While others may look at that as, oh, this is just one closed door, but I know that my God is going to open a much better and bigger door for me, a job that's paying me times times than what my old job was paying me so it's all about perspective some things you just have to change your perspective but going back to making god your strong tower no matter what the enemy throws at you no matter what you get yourself into go to god go to god there is literally nothing there is nothing i don't know who needs to hear this but there is nothing that you can get yourself into there is no sin too great that god cannot forgive you of there is literally no mess that god cannot clean up you are man <laughs> so whatever mess that you've made jesus has conquered it all there's nothing that he cannot do so regardless of what you're going to go to god get on your knees pray god help me jesus i need you if i ever needed you i need you now the amount of times, like, the amount of times I just say Jesus, 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 throughout the day. And God knows that's me asking for help. But once I call on the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Once I call on the mighty name of Jesus, he comes. He comes, he sh and he doesn't come alone. He comes with blessings, he comes with riches, he comes with more, he comes with the angels, he comes with abundance, he comes with fruitfulness, he comes with lessons, he comes with growth, he comes with joy, he comes with peace. He doesn't come alone, but you just have to make him your strong tower because he is a strong tower. But go, go to God first with whatever it is. Go to God first. And the thing about our father is that we can go to him unashamed. He's just that graceful and merciful. We can go to him unashamed. We can go to him with our biggest secret, something that we've never told anybody. Go to God first. God is plan A, not B, C, D, elemental P, X, Y, Z. Stop finding peace and contentment in other things outside of God because when we or stress about something, worried about something, we go to other things in the world. That is where idolization and addiction comes from. Um, she was saying that she was stressed about a particular situation, and she was saying that, oh, she when she gets home, she's going to smoke, and she was saying that, oh, she hasn't smoked. She only smokes when they this, like things like this occurs. And so I was like, why? Why don't you just pray? She was like, oh, you don't smoke? I'm like, no, I don't. 
She's like, oh, not even a little weed. I'm like, no, I've never. She's like, really? Oh my gosh. And I was like, no. She's like, so what do you do when you're stressed? Habibi, I pray. Okay, I pray. I pray. I pray. Cut off my gospel music. Mm -hmm. My worship music. Mm -hmm. Get down on my knees, praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Because it is when we praise him and worship him in the middle of a storm. Mm -hmm. That's what confuses the enemy. <laughs> I smile. I'm going to shed some tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's the last time I'm going to shed tears about that situation. In the midst of praying and worship. And then I'm going to look in the mirror. Tell myself God has you. God is graceful. It is his grace that is keeping you. He will never forsake you. Because I've never seen the righteous forsake you. And you, my dear, are righteous. Take me a nice shower. Then I'm going to set up my skin here. I want the face mask, bubble bath, wine. I don't even drink. <laughs> I'll just have a champagne food of orange juice or something. Cranberry juice. <laughs> but no, seriously, that's what I do when I'm stressed. And, and sometimes I just say, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Help me, because if you don't help me, where else can I go? Who else do I know that can help me? And I go on about my day. And it's not that I don't care, I care. I'm very emotional, but I care. Once I go to God about it, I'm not going to worry about it. Because as somebody said, if you're going to pray about it, don't worry about it. And if you're going to worry about it, don't pray about it. Because when you pray about something and then you still continue to worry and you still continue to try to meddle and be in the midst of, you know, figuring it out yourself and doing your own thing, that shows that you have little faith. You don't trust that Abba is going to sort things out. You don't trust that he is going to fix it. But think about when has he ever, when has he ever not come through? When has he ever not worked things out for your good? Hmm? I don't know one instance. There's never been a time that God has not come through for me. Even when I thought the time was wrong, when I got to know. And I'm so thankful for him. So thankful. So don't pray about it and then start butting God. There should be no but. There, there, there should be, once you pray, there should be no but God. No, okay, I've prayed about it, but God, you're not working fast enough, so I'm still going to put my hands on it, but God. I don't see you working, so you must not be working. What's going on? But God, I need it done by this date, this date, this date, this date, but God. Don't do that. There, there, there shouldn't be a but God. Once you pray about it, Pray about it and be done. Because see, once I prayed about it, to anxiety, you have to let me go depression. You have to let me go grief. You have to let me go sadness. You have to let me go stress. You have to let me go. To <laughs> and I love that for me. I love that for me. I love that for me. I love it bad. Make Jesus your strength in the struggle. And I know that's so much easier said than done. But just start telling yourself that God is your strength in the struggle. The more you tell yourself, the more you start to believe. The more you're submerging yourself in his word, the more and more you become like him. The more you pray and you get to know him and you create an intimate relationship with him, the more peaceful you're, you'll find your life. And I'm not saying you won't have any problems. Please, don't get misconstrued. A lot of people think that once they give their life to God, that you'll be problem-free. The enemy isn't going to attack me. That's not true. In fact, when you give your life to God, that's when it, the enemy attacks you more. The Bible tells us that our God is a strong tower. So even when your little townhouse starts to shake, Shake, crumble, you still have Abba that you can hear. Because you are Abba's baby. Okay. One, 
a god you are shouldn't be in trouble two god is plan a not plan b three this is a strong tower four there is absolutely nothing that you could get yourself into there is nothing that the enemy can throw at you that jesus has not already overcome there is no sin too great that god cannot forgive you of there is no mess that god cannot clean up regardless of whether you make it intentionally unintentionally god will never forsake you that's all make sure you subscribe I do want to formally welcome y'all to the new chapter.